make sure you're logged into the curriculum as we explore the scope and sequence, pacing, standards, and the coherence of the high school curriculum. Let's um, go into the, we want to find a course guide, so we need to pick a course. It's the same as all courses. On that unit at a glance page is a place where you can drill down into the course guide. And we'll go to this section on scope and sequence. Begins with a pacing guide. Although this is the course guide for Algebra 1, you can see the pacing for the other high school courses as well. It will be the same across um, for each high school course. Middle school follows a very similar um, layout. Notice that um, the lesson and assessments are included here. There is not built in time for modeling prompts, which are optional. And then there's some lessons that are optional as well. Those are listed for each unit. There's also, um, if a unit is a little bit longer, there will be a, a mid-unit assessment, and that's what the MA stands for. Notice the number of days, suggested days, are listed here. And again, we include time for lessons and assessments. Um, you'd have to add a little bit more time to bring in those optional lessons. So we're in the course guide. Um, if you'd like to know a little bit more about the optional lessons, let's go to the teacher guide to the curriculum, which is on the landing page for um, the high school curriculum. We were just there in another video. A typical lesson is where we're going to look. And there's some information about what makes a lesson optional. So you can check that out at your convenience. And that is in the course that is in the teacher guide to the curriculum. You can see it says I am curriculum there. One way to tell the difference between teacher and course guide is you're going to see a course here when it's in the course guide. So we were looking at the Algebra 1 course guide. You see the pacing for Algebra 1. And then we have a dependency diagram. Um, and it's for the, all three courses. There is some flexibility to rearrange units of the curriculum to meet local needs. So this dependency map shows how to preserve coherence if you do want to think about changing the order of units. If no modifications are made, students would encounter an Algebra 1 course, then Geometry, then Algebra 2, progressing through each unit from left to right going across. Where there is an arrow, the latter unit depends on knowing some things from the previous unit. So for example, G7 is circles, and there's an arrow pointing from G7 to Algebra 2, Unit 6. If um, you're thinking about rearranging things, realize that if you make a shift, it will bend and sometimes can break the coherence. So if units are rearranged, just make sure the arrows stay in the forward direction. There's another view when we scroll down that shows this dependency map across both middle school and high school. And you can look at that closely later on. So another um, question teachers often ask is, where can I see how lessons are aligned to standards? So there's a view with lessons and standards where all the standards are listed and, excuse me, where all the lessons are listed and you see where all the standards are. And then if you keep scrolling down, we do the reverse, 
where if you want to know, well, where are the lessons that teach this first standard? You can find those in this course. A note about standards alignments, and uh, I want to go into actually look at one of the lessons to explain this. So we'll do algebra one. Let's look at lesson two here. So within a lesson, the, the standards will be listed and uh, operational work. So we've got our standards listed here, but then some are building on, one is addressing, and then a couple building towards. So those are the three kinds of alignments that we make in the curriculum. Just realize that oftentimes a particular standard requires weeks, months, or sometimes even years to achieve. In many cases, building on work in prior grade levels. So when an activity reflects the work of prior grades and is being used to bridge to a grade level standard, that's when we say it's building on. So even though this is algebra one, it's building on a sixth grade statistics standard. When an activity is laying the foundation for a grade level standard, but has not yet reached the level of the standard, that's when we would use this building towards terminology. And then when a task is focused on the grade level work, the alignment is addressing. So let's go back and just look at this unit one for algebra one. Actually, I want to look at all the units for algebra one. Every unit one of all the courses, middle school and high school, were chosen for a particular reason. And often folks who are new to the curriculum are curious about, well, why did you choose um, statistics for the first unit of algebra one? And, why in middle school do we start with geometry units? And why does geometry start with constructions and rigid transformations? And why does algebra two start with sequences and functions? So um, it's, a, it's a unit that has built-in opportunities for students to shake off some of the summer dust and, and show who they are as mathematicians while keeping the focus on grade level standards. Um, the curriculum designs opportunities for review while starting the year, but also inviting grade level math. And it's a great idea to begin with a focus on new content at the start of the year for lots of reasons. After summer break, how, how might we invite all students just to get back in the groove of doing math? A new topic puts students on a more level playing field as compared to what happens when a school year begins with review work. When students have fewer preconceptions about their abilities and those of their classmates, it, it helps to lessen or avoid some of the classroom status issues. As a result, teachers can focus on developing classroom norms and a culture where everyone's ideas are welcomed and valued and everyone is expected and feels invited to contribute. This kind of classroom culture works to develop students' identity and their agency as math thinkers and problem solvers. And it sets the stage for all learners to grow. At the start of the school year, teachers are focused on establishing routines that'll be used throughout the year. So that first unit is also introducing students to the instructional routines in our curriculum, which help teachers and students together create a learning space where communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and making connections is the norm. If we go into the course guide, you'll see a section which talks about those instructional routines that are used in the high school curriculum. So um, those instructional routines are, are just one way you can see over in the, the teacher guide, they're just one way that 
Um, we help the problem-based curriculum to be accessible for all students. Um, if we scroll down, you'll see some of the math language routines are listed here in much more detail. Um, this teacher guide gives you a, a framework for the supports that provide teachers with practical strategies in every single lesson. And keep in mind that our overarching design structure begins with an invitation to math. And then there's deep study and then consolidating and applying the mathematics. So keep in mind that not only is the curriculum problem based, but it is also iteratively structured. This visual comes from a blog post by Kate Noakart. I am director of curriculum strategy for grades K through 12, and it's something that's featured in our professional learning materials. But there's an overarching design structure of inviting students into the mathematics and then deep study of concepts and procedures and consulting and applying. And we see that in every single activity with the launch, work time, and synthesis as well as the warm-up class activities and, and lesson synthesis of the day. And then the unit also follows that same pattern. As you explore a unit and lesson materials, please keep in mind this overarching design structure. Thanks again for choosing Kendall Hunt as your platform for the illustrative mathematics curriculum.